I've been so impressed with how my oval 15 meter moxin has worked out that I decided to build one for 10 meters. I've got a 10 meter halfway vertical, but uh, I find that I just need a little bit more directivity to work some of the unique DX stations that I'm hearing on the band. I had some extra 10 foot long Black Widow fishing rods that I decided to use along with some 14 gauge insulated antenna wire. So I put together a quick concept of what it would look like. Here's a top view of how the Moxon antenna is constructed. It uses four fishing rods or four 72 inch fiberglass driveway markers to support the antenna element wires. The fishing rods or poles have to be mounted onto a wooden closet rod and that closet rod is connected to the mast via a piece of uh, 1x6 or 1x8 uh, with U-bolts. So it's pretty easy to attach that uh, antenna boom to the mast. The 14 gauge insulated antenna wire is taped to the rods and then the tie wrap is used at each corner to allow the transition right at 1.9 meters down toward the 100 millimeter uh, gap insulators. So it's a very simple antenna to construct. The rods bow a little bit, keeping it under tension so it handles wind very well, and it's quite rugged. Here's what the antenna looks like up at 14 feet for initial testing. It only took a couple of minor tweaks to get the SWR to be just about perfect. And then I decided to uh, compare the Moxon against my half-wave vertical by using uh, FT4 signals. Uh, V31MA was coming in very consistently, so I used him as a reference, and I switched back and forth between the halfway vertical and the Moxon, and consistently saw about a, a 9 dB difference, which is pretty impressive. That's a big difference in signal noise. Uh, weaker signals were about 6 to 7 dB uh, better with the Moxon than with the halfway vertical. By the way, there is an application for Android. Uh, called uh, GPS test which is uh, normally used for just location but it does have a direction finding application which is really handy for antenna work just point the phone up at your antenna boom and align it with it and it'll tell you the exact uh, bearing that it's pointed to I like to use two hole strap clamps on the mass to boom uh, bracket as that allows me to remove the antenna quickly from the mast to uh, get the mast uh, to align each time, I have a small uh, key uh, slot that I milled into the uh, mast, and that uh, aligns with a screw in the uh, mast to boom plate. Here are the uh, U-bolts that I like to use. They're especially designed for antenna work, and they have longer threaded uh, portions, which uh, really help if you're using wooden mast to uh, boom plates like, like I do. And here's the center insulator. Uh, I already have uh, sealed it uh, with sealant to keep moisture off the uh, uh, coax and off the connected areas. And uh, this stuff works really well. It cures pretty quick and it turns clear and that's when you know it's uh, ready for power. The gap insulators are just a, a simple piece of laminate cut in a rectangular form. And here is how the uh, transition occurs from the uh, fiberglass rods uh, toward the gap insulator. I did finally interlace the 10 meter moxon with my uh, 15 meter oval moxon. And uh, here they both are up at uh, around 20 feet. Uh, I've been able to work around the world with the uh, 15 meter oval moxon at this height. Uh, so I imagine uh, the 10 meter version will do uh, just about the same. I run uh, separate coax speeds for each antenna as uh, I have uh, friends in Switzerland that have uh, done uh, multi-band uh, moxins and uh, they talk about the challenges uh, they have uh, uh, trying to get uh, a good, good SWR with interconnected uh, driven elements. So I decided to just run uh, separate coax speeds. A question that I had when I started this project was what will happen to the SWR responses when I interlace the two antennas with each other? Well here's a uh, 
a slide that shows the SWR of uh, each antenna all by themselves. The 15 meter antenna had a uh, best SWR point at 21.310 megahertz, and the 10 meter Moxon had the best SWR at uh, 28.660 megahertz. So that was the initial uh, SWR of the two antennas on their own mast. When I interlaced them, uh, I found that the uh, SWR degraded slightly on the 15 meter antenna, but the resonant uh, best SWR point didn't really change very much. The uh, 10 meter Moxon, however, has a uh, much higher frequency of best SWR now, uh, which is interesting. It's uh, not exactly what I expected, but uh, both of these uh, SWRs are, are totally acceptable. And uh, when it uh, rains and gets snowy, normally the uh, best SWR point goes down in frequency, so that'll help the 10 meter uh, SWR, even though it's uh, totally usable even at this point. And uh, not much uh, needs to happen to make the uh, 15 meter uh, SWR uh, pretty darn decent. So anyway, that's what happens when you interlace antennas. Uh, it can be quite a challenge to uh, try to uh, interconnect the driven elements on Moxons and have multiband operation. So I just uh, elected to run separate coax, as I mentioned earlier. Here are some uh, assembly instructions in case you uh, start to build one of these antennas. Uh, first of all, I uh, normally uh, create the uh, wire element loop first and uh, once you have that complete then uh, you can go ahead and uh, mount that uh, wire assembly onto the uh, fiberglass poles. So it's a, it's a pretty quick project. Moxon antennas have a few advantages that really stand out. Uh, one of them is the incredible rejection of uh, backside signals which uh, helps uh, in my environment to reduce noise I've got from uh, the neighborhood uh, where I live. Uh, the other uh, advantage is that uh, it, they have very low angles of radiation for uh, even if they're mounted fairly close to the ground so they, they make a great antenna and they're simpler to get tuned up in a Yagi. To get similar performance with a Yagi you'd probably have to go to three elements. Uh, so if uh, you haven't tried a directive antenna, a Moxon is a really great uh, first uh, attempt uh, to get uh, something up there and it's uh, pretty impressive to be able to turn it and have weak signals uh, jump up by uh, two or three S units uh, as you turn the antenna. Anyway, uh, we have a lot more uh, in the solar cycle left. I think we've got a couple more years left so I hope uh, you get one built and uh, enjoy some DX73s.